Hi, Chad here from Purple Color Life. As you can see, this is not one of our normal videos. We're not on a tractor, we're not with a chainsaw, we're not cutting some firewood, but it has something to do with something else that's near and dear to my heart, and that is food. And my favorite food is steak and meat. So in this video, I wanna do a review of the Philips Smokeless Indoor Grill. I'm gonna to talk to you about how I ordered it, how I use it, and what my thoughts are of it, considering that I live the keto lifestyle and I do a lot of cooking of meat. So if this is not something you're into, you're into our normal tractors, snow blowers, snow plows, and firewood content, go ahead and skip this video, tune in next time. But if you like steaks and you're trying to cook in the middle of winter time like me, I think you'll find this very interesting. You can see here I'm doing some grilling, but I'm not out here at the Weber grill. Now I really love this Weber grill. I've had other grills I didn't like nearly as much as this one. But the problem is in the middle of winter, it's really cold outside. So I don't wanna be going in and out of the house to do my grilling. You can see there's snow right beside me on the roof of the garage. So it is cold out here and it does take the Weber grill longer to warm up and cook things in the winter time. So in this unmarked box is an order I placed for this Philips smokeless infrared indoor grill. Now I wanted to give this a try because I have been living the keto lifestyle with some breaks for over a year now. And my keto is a little bit different. I don't really eat salads. So mostly what I eat is uh, red meat, chicken, pork chops, and then vegetables, mostly broccoli and some cauliflower or cauliflower rice. Now, when you turn this thing on, you can see it's a bright red. It reminds me of the Seinfeld, uh, Kenny Rogers chicken scene, because that thing lights up the entire room. And I ordered a new silicone set of tongs there to do my flipping of the meat on the grill because I didn't want to scratch that new surface. You can see it's got a, a handles there on the grate so you can lift the surface off. Here I'm testing the surface temperature. I just turned this on seconds ago and you can see how quickly it heats up. It's heating right up above 380 there. And this is after about a minute we're over 500 degrees. So it really gets hot quickly. And I have some steaks and a pork chop here. Now these are cut a little bit thicker than normal that I would get them at the butcher, but this is what they had. And you can see that's a big steak, thick, and um, it takes up about as much height as that griddle allows for. And this pork chop's pretty thick also. Now, never having grilled indoors before, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect with this. I like that it got so hot quickly because I like that sizzle noise that seals in the juices and the flavor when you first put the piece of meat on. You can see right away it does start sizzling. That's a nice marbled piece of New York strip. You see there's like a coating on that griddle that's a non-stick coating. And I set the timer on the stove here for six minutes. The way I like to cook a steak is six minutes on each side and um, that usually works out pretty good. Now this steak's a little bit thicker so it may take a little bit longer and when that happens what I do is I rotate the steak so that it gets the grill marks cross hatched on it. I do like this McCormick Perfect Pinch Steak seasoning. I use this on pork chops, steaks. I even use it on some vegetables, use it on chicken. It is my favorite meat seasoning. You can see I've sprinkled some on here and I do it on both sides. And the grill has multiple settings. I've got it currently set on the high mode. The one down below that with the little squiggly lines that's just the keep warm mode. So if you had something you were trying to just keep warm after you cooked it, you'd use that for that. But normally you're on the on high position. The infrared heat is really hot. So I would caution, you know, if you've got kids around, obviously you don't want to be using this where they can get to it because that grill does get very hot. 
Now you can touch those handles and they're not hot and directly in front and behind the grill is not hot. Now they say this is smokeless. I don't know if you'd call that smoke or steam, but there is something that rises above and you can see it does make some splattering. So all that grease is kind of splattering around a little bit. It didn't make much of a mess. A lot of it does drip down in the grate there, you can see. Just like it would do on a barbecue grill outside. But this is much less smoke. And having never grilled on this before, I wasn't sure, you know, would six minutes be equivalent to out on the Weber grill. So I was also watching the time to see how much the steak was cooking in that first six minutes. Now here I've made my first flip after the first six minutes. You can see it did make grill lines on the steak, which is great. I've cooked on this grill since then, and what I do now is I rotate the steak so that it gets the cross hatch marks when I'm grilling it and then I flip it over to the other side to do the same. Now you can see Olive says, boy, you're grilling inside here. It smells pretty good. Because normally I don't do any grilling inside. It's normally outside on the grill. And this is such an improvement. You know, I've always wanted a way to cook a good steak indoors when I can't use the outside grill or I don't want to go out in the freezing cold. And this definitely, having used it now almost every night for a full week and a half, uh, this is a great solution. Not quite as good as an outside grill, but really close and way, way better than anything else I've ever tried inside. I've tried broiling steaks. I've tried cooking them in a skillet. Um, there just is no way to get that grilled steak taste indoors before this product, so I'm really happy with it. We're not sponsored by Philips, and they didn't send us this product or anything like that. We're just doing this review because I really like this as a keto-friendly option for grilling indoors in the middle of the freezing cold winter here in Northwest Pennsylvania. You can see that's really sizzling on there. And the flavor has been sealed in and a lot of the juice is sealed in. That's one of the things I like about grilling. You can see here it's almost done. One of the downsides to this grill is if you're looking for the color of the meat, like if you like to put a little slice in it and check it, it always is going to look pink or red on this grill because of the, the brightness of those red infrared lights. I'm just checking the grill grates to see how hot they are and the surface temperature of the pork chop. I'll put links down below to this grill and those tongs and the seasoning and my electronic thermometer. So we used the electronic thermometer before on the Blackstone griddle. Blackstone Griddle was another product I really like for camping. This is going to be a product that I really like indoors in the winter. I haven't tried grilling anything other than meat on this. You could do some vegetables, but mostly I just do the meat. And there's that thermometer I had mentioned, the uh, new tongs, perfect pinch seasoning. I'll put links all to all of that below in the Amazon affiliate links. I like my pork chops to be at 170. The steak I want somewhere around 165, 160. Because it'll continue to cook even after I take it off the grill. I like my steaks medium, I like them pink and juicy in the center. So there I'm showing the keep warm mode. You can see it turns those heaters down. And then I've turned the heat off. Now this steak turned out delicious. There is a little bit more crispy there on the outside that I would like, but it was a thicker steak than I'm used to and I wanted to make sure I cooked it the whole way through. I probably could have taken it off a little bit earlier. It was still delicious. Still way better than any other inside cooking method I've tried to cook the steak.
pork, my pork chop is cooked the whole way through there. It's still juicy and tender. I'm gonna check the steak. Here it's still really juicy and it's perfect for me. I like that, just about that amount of pinkness. Hot in the center, still juicy. Here you can see I've got my cauliflower rice. Perfect dinner, some steak, some pork chop, some cauliflower rice. I like to do under 30 carbs a day. So I do allow myself some carbs. I'm not totally carb free. Here I'm showing you the leftovers on the grill and how it, how it drops down through to that grease pan. You can see that just slides out easily from underneath. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to clean this. And I have cleaned this every night. I usually let it cool down so that it's not hot to the touch. But I don't let it sit overnight. I go ahead and clean it the same night, you know, within a couple hours of cooking on it, after you're done eating and it's cooled down. It does not take long to cool down. And this is pretty much the method I've used each time. I first just use my hand to scrape off any of the larger chunks and use a washcloth and some Dawn dish soap. It cleans up really easily. Now, like I said, I've never let anything sit on it overnight or, you know, cooked on it day after day without cleaning it. I clean it after every use. I clean it just a few hours later and just uh, scrubbing it with a washcloth and some soap makes pretty easy work of cleaning that grill. When I first put the grease pan in it, after assembly, I thought about layering in some aluminum foil in there. But I'm glad I didn't. I have not done that to date. It's easy enough to clean off, like I said, just the same way with your fingers scraping off any of the bigger chunks and then a washcloth and some Dawn dish soap to wash the rest. You can see the whole cleanup process is very quick and easy here. You know, if you were, if you were cleaning even a skillet, it would be at least this difficult. I know some of our skillets are really hard to clean, especially if you've done something like a steak in them. Can I take a little napkin or a, a paper towel get it wet, just wipe the outside of the grill because like I said, there was a little bit of grease splatter while it was cooking. Didn't get the countertop dirty, but it does get those edges dirty. I'm gonna try to wipe those inside edges just to keep it cleaner. Stuff wipes off pretty easily. And then I take a second paper towel and wipe it down just to kind of dry it and wipe anything else that's left on it. Put the grease pan back in, slides in, and the griddle on top. Like I said, I've used this just about every night for a week and a half now, so I've got a lot of experience on it and I can say I am really happy with it. I believe the one I got was an Amazon refurbished one. It was around $100. I believe they're $150 if you don't get the refurbished one. You can see here I'm cooking some hamburgers on it. They turned out great. So a great dinner with the grill. Really happy with it. And no regrets. Give it a try if you're considering it. I think you will like it, especially if, like me, you're on the keto lifestyle. I don't call it a diet. I call it a lifestyle. This really makes cooking the meat indoors easy if you're in the cold climate like we are. This isn't our normal type video. We're not outside, we're not on the tractor, we're not doing any chainsaw work or any firewood. But if you like videos like this, go ahead and give it a like, click, and click subscribe if you're not already following us at Purple Color Life. And leave a comment below to what you use to cook your keto
friendly meals in the middle of winter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time.